Hi everyone, and here's our devotional for Thursday, June 21st, 2018. Entitled, and this is day four, entitled Soil Improvement, Roadside Soil. And I will apologize for all this traffic and crazy stuff going on out here. That's the only downfall to being out here is all this traffic. But anyways, enough rambling. Listen to this. Behold, the sower went out to sow. As he was sowing, some seeds fell beside the, fell beside the road, and the birds came and ate it up. Mark 4, 3 and 4. I live in an area of the United States known as High Mountain Desert. This presents many challenges for me as a gardener. Not only is rainfall limited, but the growing season is significantly shortened by cool temperatures. An even worse problem is that the soil is not conducive to growing plants. It is a mixture of rocks, sand, and hard clay. My paternal grandmother was an avid gardener. As a young child, I marveled at the diversity and size of Nanny's garden. But it wasn't until I was an adult and a gardener myself that I fully understood the secret of her gardening success. Each year, Nanny mixed large amounts of manure and compost with the dirt in her backyard, working it into a dark, rich loam. Had she chosen to skip this all-important task, her garden would never have reached its full potential. I can't help but see the comparison to the parable Jesus told about the sower found in Matthew 13, Mark 4, and Luke 8. As I read through the account, I was reminded of this important truth. Soil can be changed and improved upon for the purpose of increasing produ- production. And if we're wise, we will see to it that the soil of our hearts is kept in top-notch condition. So how can we bring soil improvement about, especially when we have the tendency to hear what we want to hear, see what we want to see, and do what we want to do? Hmm, no wonder Jesus concluded the parable with the words, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Let's begin with the roadside soil. Interestingly enough, Jesus began this parable in Mark 4 with a command. Listen to this. He wasn't talking about physical hearing. Instead, he referred to spiritual hearing, which always involves action. James 1.22 If the soil of our hearts has become concrete hard, the seed of God's word won't germinate, grow, or produce. That's why the enemy of our souls strives to harden our hearts with things like rebellion, resentment, and bitterness. He'll also use whatever means necessary to steal God's word away from us with such tactics as keeping us from individual and corporate study of the Bible. Our spiritual armor must be kept in place in order to take our stand against him. Ephesians 6, 10-18 It's imperative that we determine in advance to keep our heart's soil loose and receptive to God's word. Please take the time to study the digging deeper verses below to realize the consequences of gardening our hearts toward the one... Wait, I need to read this again. Okay. It's imperative that we determine in advance to keep our hearts soil loose and receptive to God's word. Okay, please take the time to study the digging deeper verses below to realize the consequences of hardening our hearts toward the one who made them and the cure of hardened heart, cure for hardened hearts. Heavenly Father, gardener of our souls and hearts, forgive us for those times in which we garden our hearts in rebellion against you. How foolish of us to believe that we know better than you, that we don't need the one who made us. Lord, make us especially aware of the enemy who wants our lives so hardened to your truth that we are unable to accept the word planted in us. Instead, may we allow you to plant your word deep and wide in our lives to produce a harvest for you. In the name of Jesus, who warned against rebellion, we pray. Amen. Digging deeper. Read some or all of the following passages and record your thoughts on hardened hearts, the devastating results, and the only cure. Digging deeper. Okay, it's acting kind of strange. I'll do the best I can. It's not really letting me read these. Let's see. Ephesians 4.18, Matthew 13.14 and 15. That's Matthew 13, verses 14 and 15. Proverbs 28, verses 13 and 14. Hebrews 3, 7 to 11. Jeremiah 17, 9. Hebrews 4, 12. Psalm 119, 9. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Romans 10, 17. 
Jeremiah 18.12, Exodus 8.15, Jeremiah 16.12, Romans 2.5, and John 1.14. Well, you know what? It is very easy to just go off the path and, you know, let rebellion or bitterness or resentment take hold. And um, I've done that, but I praise God that, you know, by His Holy Spirit, He showed me where I went wrong and um, and He has, you know, restored me. I um, not I had too much trouble with those things, but, you know, it can happen. So I pray that it doesn't, I pray that he will always, that I'll always have his armor on and that I won't let my heart ever get hardened toward him. Um, Because I need him every minute of every day. So I don't want to lose the best friend and help that I have and the master gardener. So that would be my thoughts on the subject. If you want to share yours with me, that'd be awesome. So may the Lord bless you all and be with you till tomorrow.